speaking on, as Siobhan has mentioned, on the, um, the pre-consultation process with the Sicheni uh, University in Gyor on the doctoral program. Um, so my name is Frank Doyle. I'm a lecturer in um, Limerick University and uh, as Siobhan mentioned, coordinating the masters. So just looking at the structure of the presentation, I'll just quickly look at my own background, the doctoral application process, the consultation process, then the, as in between the application and the actual beginning of uh, the comprehensive exam, the comprehensive exam itself, I'll discuss what happens there, and an overview of my planned research work and the timeline going with it. So just, um, myself then I'll just sorry um just trying to make this other screen disappear yes so my own background so i'm lecturing in the electrical department in Toos midwest and i'm a senior researcher with the irish digital engineering and events manufacturing research institute idm at Toos. So the Masters in Digitalization Manufacturing program has been running for the last four years and I'm coordinating that program. I teach a module on it as well. And I supervise researchers um, who are taking part in that Masters. So all of these uh, researchers are undertaking projects within their own industry and their thesis is based on that. Research projects that we've worked on in the Institute are all in collaboration with industry in the plastics, medical device and precision engineering sectors. And typically these are in with the aim of developing sustainable energy solutions um, through digitalization of equipment and processes for manufacturing, as well as optimizing process um, processes. So the, yes, the research work is focused on energy efficiency in manufacturing with the goal of effecting behavioral change for production optimization and carbon reduction. This is just an overview of publications that I have um, pre presented or produced since 2015. And these are in various topics of energy efficiency in industry and more recently in the digitalization of manufacturing. The plan for my research then is that um, it's focusing on how data, which is relevant to the optimization of operations and processes, may be obtained in regulated manufacturing environments. And, and this to be done in a manner which is acceptable within the confines of existing regulations. So highly regulated medical device and pharmaceutical environments. So operational technology and information technology are critical elements in discrete and batch processing manufacturing operations. However, access to the actual data production equipment and the resulting data streams is controlled and highly restricted. But continual and successful operation of manufacturing processes need effective maintenance of equipment and to understand the system behavioral characteristics at various stages of operations of production require relevant data capture and analysis to actually associate production activities and to identify potential failure events. Regulatory requirements and IT security concerns restrict the deployment of computing equipment in the workplace. So alternative methods are needed to capture the data required. So while control recipes used by programmable logic controllers or PLCs are understood, understood to be operational data and are thus protected, the actual live data tags on PLCs are seen as factory data and separate from protected data and thus can be seen as usable in this quest for independent, intelligent analysis of systems. So if we can link this data source with additional sensor data, so current vibrational or environmental data, we can make it possible for 5G connected edge devices to deploy machine learning to update cloud-based dashboards with advanced knowledge of potential failure of components such as bearings um, or races or seals on critical equipment. So this PhD proposal aims to investigate a new approach which integrates data from multiple sources of control data and additional sensor data. 
and this will allow generation time series profiles of processes to monitor run-end sequences for critical bearings in manufacturing process. So it aims to estimate uh, useful run life of bearings and predict failure, uh, be bearing failures in order to avoid catastrophic failures, both in loss of batch and consequential doubt time. Okay, so now just looking at the actual doctoral program, um, which I'm working, uh, which I'm joining. So the program itself is based in the university in Gyor in Hungary. Um, it provides two specializations. It's in, um, there's a the management specialization, which focuses on various fields of business administration and the transdiscipline specialization focuses at opening novel perspectives on current issues in business administration under complex economic and social circumstances by directing attention to problem solving and decision making. So then the ideal cohort would have a master's degree in relevant fields, appropriate level of work experience and good communication skills. So the call for applications is, is visible and um, sorry, is at this link at the bottom here. Just looking then at the application process. So there's a certain amount of documentation required and this includes a copy of university degree or master's degree. Uh, professional CV, list of publications, if you have any, um, and a research plan. So what is the, looking at the, the focus of your research and a cover letter, and then some letters of recommendation. It also has a requirement for um, a foreign language proficiency in two languages. So after I had completed the application process, I was invited to visit the university where I met with professors from the department itself, as well as the director of the doctoral program. There we discussed um, my own research background. We looked at addressing the, how do you find the gap in research? We discussed um, my proposed research plans and we spoke about the comprehensive exam process. So this is where um, prospective candidates are, um, there's an interview process where um, the written and oral process, which I'll speak about in a moment. Um, I also got a tour of the university and research laboratories. And afterwards there was regular consultation with the program manager was available for any questions I had about the application itself or the comprehensive exam. So the comprehensive exam or COMPS as it is abbreviated to consists of two parts, so two exams. There's a th theoretical written part where applicants can give evidence of their background knowledge. And the aim here is to verify the candidates have the necessary foundations in the knowledge background and research methods, which will allow them and enable them to pursue and develop their research. So for this, there is a list of 20 questions which are published and candidates on the day are given eight of these questions and select four from there. Um, and then they have a, an opportunity by answering these questions to demonstrate an understanding of the topic and how, so these are philosophical uh, topics on uh, the philosophy of science. So they can demonstrate how these topics can uh, or what they, how they may or may not be applied to the candidates proposed research. So that's the first part, the theoretical part. The second part then is the oral part, and this is an actual interview with the committee, which will take place after the written test. And this is in the form of uh, free flowing conversations, which is typically up to an hour. Um, and in this, the, um, the, this covers areas such as the literature studies, choosing journals for new ideas and contributions. So how the applicant is looking at uh, how their research work can be disseminated. Um, looking at the research design to support qualitative and quantitative data analysis um, during the research period. And also looking at any foreseeable limitations for the research. Okay. There is also a student 
uh, assessment submission to be um, submitted to the committee before the interview exam. And this is basically in the form of an extended abstract. So there are seven different topics that are to be, to be covered on it. So the problem scope itself, the gap in lit literature, the purpose of the research, um, the research design, then how data collection and, ana and analysis may be carried out, looking at an overview of what the main results should be, and looking at the originality of findings and the arguments of the, the thesis. And then again, looking at limitations, what challenges might be foreseen um, in the research. Okay. And then, yes, so my own research plan then over the last few months has evolved towards um, a more specific uh, focus and with, with the idea of, um, with the application of a, a case study as well. So it's looking towards the investigation of a real-time sensing solution, which would be using acoustic emissions for monitoring industrial parameters and providing decision support for maintenance and operation functions in a pharmaceutical plant. And if successful, the approach will have further potential in other manufacturing sectors, such as the food industry. And here below is just a, um, an overview of the plan for my research. Okay, that's me. Um, anybody, any questions? Thank you, Frank. Um, you've done a lot of groundwork so far. And if it's okay with you now, I'm, I'm going to invite Kathleen in to join the conversation. Great. Um, Kathleen, would you like to introduce yourself? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. yes. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I, I want to introduce myself and I, I have some, some uh, thoughts. Uh, I'm the program manager of the doctoral program in business administration. And uh, uh, about, about the program, this is an institutionalized program. So we are, when I'm saying program, I'm talking about the department, a doctor, about a doctoral school and uh, not about the topic. This is very important because sometimes uh, we use the word program in, in both uh, uh, contexts. Uh, Frank is uh, uh, one of the pi pilots, if I can say that. Uh, uh, but at the same time, I should say that every every PhD applicant is different. Frank has a very, very um, uh, huge, 